caustic painting is a is done with beeswax, Darmar resin, and pigment. The paint goes on in a molten state. It dries instantly. And the word encausticos means to burn in. So every layer of an encaustic paint is fused to the layer beneath it with some heat source. It's so ancient. Uh, it was, encaustic painting was done as early as 80 AD by the Egyptians, Romans, and Greeks in an area 60 miles south of Cairo known as the Fayum area. It was done with four colors, uh, red ochre, yellow ochre, white, and black. And if the people were of means, it was done with um, gold leaf as well. The portraits were hung on the walls of the people's homes when they were alive, and when they passed, the portraits were, went on the top of the mummy, the face of the mummies. Previous to that, the uh, Greeks were trying to decorate their warships. They had found that if they coated the rungs of their warships with beeswax, it would make them watertight. Then they found if they added earth pigment to the beeswax, they could get designs on their warships. So that's before encaustic painting happened. I think because I have worked in a huge amount of media over my lifetime, like I started as in ceramics, I went to um, metal smithing and jewelry, then fiber and textiles and collage, and something happened to me when I saw my first encaustic painting. It was a very primal feeling, like I felt like there was a string between me and this painting and I was being pulled into it. And as I get older, I know that my body sort of knows things that my mind doesn't really know. And I've learned that I should follow that. I shouldn't negate that. So I went, this is something I need to know about. So being a mixed media artist or coming from a multimedia background, what happened for me is I realized that encaustic was the glue that could hold everything together for me. That I could use medium with metal, with ceramic, with fiber, um, anything pretty much that wasn't plastic or shiny um, was fair game. I could sculpt with it, I could do 3D. Um, it's incredibly forgiving. You can go forward, you can go backward, you can rework something in five minutes, 10 minutes, a year, 20 years. It's always like open to and receptive to change. You can be done or you can go back and go, mm, I don't like that, or you can resolve. Sometimes you can't resolve a painting for years and all of a sudden you get this aha moment. And so all you have to do is heat it up and keep going. I get a lot of inspiration from journaling. I, you know, things kind of pop onto the page that I go, that I have surprises around. Um, a lot of my inspiration, this may sound really funny to you, but I, when I walk the dogs, I get a lot of inspiration. And I don't know if I'm in a really relaxed state or I'm concentrating on the dogs, therefore I start seeing things in a different way. Um, but, I'm really, really visual, and visual in the sense that I notice repeat patterns, and not so much, I don't notice light and dark so much, but I look at architecture a lot, um, repeat patterns, um, buildings, things that are in the street, plant material, um, I can look at something and then just go off morphing it, you know, and going, well, okay, then I could do that, and what if I this, and, you know, I feel like I have this amazingly fluid mind, and so to help me with that, I will create these containers from which I work where I will say, okay, 
I'm only going to work in red for the next month or I'm only going to work in split complements which are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel and they're opposite or I'm only going to work with text or I'm going to use black pens, two shredders and white paper and so uh, to harness that creative whatever spirit in me I like to give myself a little box in which to you know assignment like an assignment to where I can go completely wild but inside of parameters Okay, the notion of uh, revealing and concealing in my work uh, can be done in a couple of ways and um, with the handwriting I will either take it and put it in the shredder or now my latest thing is that I'm cutting little squares out of it so some of it you could still read and you know but you don't get the whole um, the whole meaning of what's going on there so that can just be collaged in with medium and another way of revealing and concealing is lots of layers of medium so that if you put something down and you put medium over it and fuse it and then keep going put something on top of that medium fuse it something on top of that like we showed in the collage section uh, things become obscure the deeper into the wax they are you can still see that something's there but it's not so available you know you know it's there but you don't know what it says and I love that you know of the mystery of it and the layers that you can get from encaustics so fabulous and magical I have to listen, I have to listen to um, what's going on I, when I work. I have to drown out an inner critic and journaling has helped that a whole lot. I do this practice called the morning pages which is three, uh, three handwritten, long handwritten pages. Um, I can see who my what I'm up against, who is that person in the studio with me saying, you have no talent, you're so stupid, you can't put those colors together, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes I have to put on the headphones and ask, you know, tell it to leave the room or just drown it out. Um, if I'm hooked in and connected to something greater than myself, which I think is what we're all striving to do as artists or to have happen to us as artists. Um, there's a really great quote, my favorite quote by Robert Henri, which is, the object isn't to make art, it's to be in that place which makes art inevitable. So when I'm hooked in to something greater than myself, I feel like I'm not responsible, I am taking dictation. If somebody says to me, um, you need to put purple there, you need to put medium on top of it, now you should do a transfer, and I, you know, the voice is coming in and saying, here's what you do next, and it will tell me I'm done. But that doesn't always happen. So I try to be in that receptive state so that I can let go and surrender to what it is that is asking to come through me.